So yesterday we kind of started, but I want to start with the goal. Earlier on this year, I had you kind of draw this unit circle, right? We put all these angle measurements on here. By the end of the day, here's our goal. Every single angle up here, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, all the way around, right? Every single one of these angles, by the end of the day, without a calculator, because in the very near future, you're going to take a quiz. In here. What is the cosine of 120 degrees? What is the tangent of 210 degrees? What is the cosecant of 300 degrees? Basically, all of these angles are in play. In all of these angles, any of the trig functions are in play. And guess what? No calculator. Yeah, buddy, that's about to go down. So, near future, that seems like a lot, doesn't it? But it's actually really easy. It really is. So all we have to do is this. First, we got to fill in this chart. Okay, so we started filling out the chart yesterday. How far did we get? We got, these are going to be 30, 45, and 60. And we got to 45, right? Sine of 45 was root 2 over 2. And we got that because our drawing looked like this. That's a 45 degree angle. We said that was 1, which means this you had to divide by 2, which got us to root 2 over 2. And that's root 2 over 2, right? So what that means is sine of 45 is going to equal my y value, which is root 2 over 2, over my r value, which is 1, so that's root 2 over 2. Yes? And then the bell rang. So we got to do the rest. So what's cosine of 45 going to be? Cosine is x over r, so what's my x value right now? Root 2 over 2. What's my r value? So that's again going to simplify to root 2 over 2. So in our table, we can put cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. So far, so good? So what's tangent 45 going to be? What's my y value? Root 2 over 2. What's my x value? Root 2 over 2. Anything divided by itself is? One. So, from now on, sine of 45, root 2 over 2. Cosine of 45, root 2 over 2. Tangent 45, 1. Make sense? So far, so good? Okay. Do you guys remember your 30, 60, 90 shortcut? Do you guys remember this one? Yeah, so the sh it's always based on the short side. So the short side is going to be your x. So if this is x, what's the easy one? The hypotenuse is going to be double that, right? So for example, if this is my 30, if this is 5, what's the hypotenuse going to be? 10. And then how do you get the medium leg? You go x times root 3, which means that would be 5 root 3. Yes? Remember that shortcut vaguely? Okay, the way we're going to use it is here's my 30 degree angle. So I draw my reference triangle. What radius do we want to use to make our life easy? One. So if that's one, that's the hypotenuse. That's the biggest side. What's the shortest side then got to be? One half. Right? 
And then the medium side would be whatever the short side is times root 3. So 1 half times root 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. All right. What is sine of 30 degrees going to be then? Sine is y over r. What's my y? 1 half. What's my r? 1. Which is 1 half. What's cosine of 30 going to be? Root 3 over 2 over 1, which is root 3 over 2, right? What's tangent of 30 degrees going to be? Well, my y is 1 half over root 3 over 2. I got to simplify that complex fraction. Basically, if you bring this up, multiply by the reciprocal, the 2's are going to end up canceling, leaving me with 1 over root 3, which would simplify to root 3 over 3. So now in our chart, we can, we said sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 30 was root 3 over 2, and then tangent is root 3 over 3. Looking complicated, isn't it? It's not, though. It's really easy. we got one more to go. We should probably do 60 now, right? So the nice thing about 60 is it's basically going to be the exact same triangle as that first one. The only difference is my 60 degree angle is down here, and that means my 30 is up there. So again, we're going to use run, one as my radius, which means what's my x value now? It's the same triangle, guys, same numbers. One half. This would be root 3 over 2. So now, what's sine of 60 going to be? root 3 over 2. What's cosine of 60 going to be? 1 half. What's tangent of 60 going to be? Well, my y value is root 3 over 2. My x value is 1 half. Multiply by the reciprocal, the 2's are going to cancel, which leaves me with root 3 over 1, or just root 3. So, this chart here, I am going to need you to memorize this. But it's actually really, really easy to memorize. What do all six of these numbers have in common? They're all over two, aren't they? Watch this. One, two, three. Three, two, one. That's all that is. If you can remember 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, you've got six of the nine numbers memorized already. And then it's just like Detroit, 3, 1, 3, right? Nobody knows the area code for Detroit? Come on! you got to represent the 3, 1, 3, baby. Oh, that was just when I was in college. All right, anyway, that's how I remember it, 3, 1, 3. One, three. Huh? So if you know the area code of Detroit, it's the 3, 1, 3. Huh? It could be, but it's just Detroit. It's just the area code of Detroit. I, I might have been. You don't know that. You don't know me. You don't know me. It could be. I, I could tell you, but I have to kill you. So, square root of 3 over 3, 1, square root of 3. I guarantee you, if you take the time, two minutes of your life, to just simply do this, draw this out two times. Sine, cosine, tangent. 30, 45, 60. 1 half, root 2 over 2. Root 3 over 2, 1 half. Root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 3, 1, root 3. If you just take the time, two minutes, to draw that chart out. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3. 
The hardest thing to memorize is which one goes on top, the square root of 3 over 3 or the square root of 3. Like that's the only thing you really have trouble remembering. And the, what this gives us with our reference angle combination is almost all of these numbers already. Because a 30 degree angle is just a 30 degree angle, but a 150 degree angle is nothing more than a 30 degree angle in the second quadrant. Here's how easy these are. I said you were going to have to be able to do what is the sine of 150 degrees, right? All this comes down to is what is my reference angle and what quadrant is that in? What's my reference angle for a 150 degree angle? 30 degrees, right? What quadrant is that in? Second. What's the sine of 30? Half. So my answer is going to be a half. And then I also need to think, and you can add this to your notes, sine, cosine, tangent. When is sine positive? Top two. Cosine is positive? Right two. Tangent's positive? First and third. We said that sine of 150, that's in the second quadrant, right? Is sine positive or negative in the second quadrant? It's positive. The answer to that question is positive one half. That's it. I can do what is the cosine of 210 degrees? What's my reference angle? And what's my quadrant? What's my reference angle for a 210 degree angle? 30. Because that's in the third quadrant. Third, right? What's cosine of 30? Look at your table. What's cosine of 30? No, it's not. Cosine of 30. Square root of 3 over 2. Third quadrant. Is cosine positive or negative in the third quadrant? Negative. Done. These are not difficult questions. They're really, really not. If I said, what is the tangent of 315? What's my reference angle? And what's my quadrant? 45 degree angle in the fourth quadrant. Is everybody seeing where I get in these? Great. What's tangent of 45? One. Fourth quadrant, is tangent positive or negative? negative? Negative. Done! Like, that's really all this is. If you know this information right here, you have your table and you have your quadrants. You have sine, cosine, and tangent of the majority of these angles here. We have sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, 60. 30, 45, 60. 30, 45, 60. 30, 45, 60. What are the only ones up here that we have not done yet? 90, 180, 270, 360s, right? Those are special angles. They even have a special name. We call those quadrantals. Why do you think we call them quadrantals? Because they're not in a quadrant. Angles that are not in a quadrant. It's really that simple. Now, we're still going to have to be able to find sine, cosine, tangent of all of those angles. Here's the problem, though. We they're not in, we can't do them the same way. 
because the goal here is going to be what is the sine of 90 degrees? Okay, that's the goal. Can I do it by reference angle? What's the reference angle for a 90 degree angle? Uh, it really doesn't even have a reference angle because I said a reference angle has to be an acute angle, didn't I? So that's not going to work. What quadrant's it in? It's not in a quadrant. So can we do these the same exact method? No. Here's, the, I'm going to say this. The easiest way I know of to do the quadrantals is purely just to memorize them. And I'll show you how easy that is. Let's do a zero degree angle first. I want to do it the same way. Here's my zero degree angle, right? Think of it just like the triangle. I want to build the reference triangle just like this, where I draw the radius out and I draw the reference triangle, right? I want you to imagine this imaginary triangle. Here's your zero degree angle. Here's your y value. Here's your x value. So my r value is 1, right? What's my x value? 1. What's my y value? 0. Agreed? It's like a really, really flat triangle, right? It's not really a triangle. We're just kind of pretending it's a triangle. Make sense? You can also just think of it as if I go out to this angle, what are the, quadrant, what are the coordinates of that point? 1, 0. Great. Using x, y's, and r's. What is sine of a zero degree angle? Y is zero divided by R, which is zero. What's cosine of zero degrees? That'd be X over R, which is one. What's tangent of zero degrees? That'd be Y, no, it's Y over X, which is zero. Right? So, on your notes, here's the easiest way I know of to memorize these. I want you to draw another set of axes. One for sine. What just happened? How did I switch over to that? One for sine. One for cosine. And one for tangent. And we're just going to put the values of our quadrantals right in their spots. We said the sine of a zero degree angle was what? Zero. We said the cosine of zero degrees was one. And we said the tangent of zero degrees was zero. We're just going to put them right in their spots. This is going to, when I look at these, I'm saying, what is the sine of zero degrees? Bam, it's zero. What's the cosine of zero degrees? One. It's right there. The answers are staring us in the face. Good? We can put them in a chart like this. But be why do you think we put them in 30, 45, 60? One, they're in order. But two, they make it a nice little pattern, don't they? It makes it easy to remember. I could put these in a chart just like these, but you won't see a pattern. It's going to be harder to remember. All right, what should we do next? 90? Okay. I want you to think about the same weird triangle, right? So here's our, here's our refer reference triangle. It's going straight up now. My R is 1. We'll just do it by the coordinates. What are the coordinates of that point? Zero, zero, 1. So my x is 0, my y is 1. What is the sine of 90 degrees? 1 over 1, which is 1. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? x over r, so 0 over 1, which is 0. What is the tangent of 90 degrees? It'd be y over x, 
Are you allowed to divide by zero? So it is undefined. There is no answer to the tangent of 90 degrees. That number does not exist. So, going back to our little chart here, put them in. We said the sine of 90 degrees was 1. We said cosine of 90 was 0. We said tangent of 90 was undefined. So far, so good. And now we can do 180. Do it the same kind of way. Here's our reference triangle going out there. My R is 1. What are the coordinates of that point? Negative 1, 0, right? So what is the sine of 180 degrees? What's my Y? 0 over 1, 0. Cosine of 180, negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Tangent of 180, y over x would be 0. So let's put those back in our chart here. So we said... This one's going to be 0, negative 1, 0. Now, we can do 270 next. Let's see how smart you guys are. Do you see a pattern developing? What do you think the answer to this is going to be? It's going to be negative 1. What do you think the answer to this is going to be? 0. What do you think the answer to this is going to be? It's going to be undefined. The zeros are always across from each other. The undefines are always across from each other. The one and the negative one are across from each other. The only difference between sine and cosine is the zeros go this way. The cosine and the zeros go this way. That's really it. This chart right here, this amount of notes on one sheet of paper, on one screen, you can do sine, cosine, and tangent of every single angle on here. We can do, what is the cosine of 270? Well, cosine of 270 is 0. We can do, what is the tangent of 360? Well, 360 is the same as 0. What's the tangent of 0? 0. The answer is 0. We can do, what is the cosine of 300 degrees? Well, Cosine of 300 that one I can do by reference angle and quadrant. What's my reference angle for a 300 degree angle? 60. What's the cosine of 60 degrees? One half. What quadrant am I in? Four. Is cosine positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? Positive. The answer is one half. Done. Coming soon in this class, you're going to take a non-calculator quiz. On that quiz, all I'm going to put, sine, cosine, tangent of these angles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 different angles. 17 times 6, actually, whatever that comes out to be. That's my pool of questions. I'm going to pick like 10 of those. Does that make sense? Sine, cosine, tangent are easy, aren't they? All right, everybody in a new spot of your notes. I want you to, we're going to draw the chart again. Here we go. See how smart you guys are. Sine, cosine, tangent. Thirty, forty-five, sixty. What goes here? Sine of thirty? One half. Sine of forty-five? Root two over two? Root three over two. Root three over two? Root two over two? One half. Root three over three? One. Root three. I 
honestly, guys, I guarantee you, if you write that down two or three times, you will have it memorized. It's not that hard. Now, I memorize these nine numbers. These nine numbers are not hard to memorize. There is a second half to this chart. I personally don't memorize it. I don't recommend you memorize it. Because... The way we're going to get the second half of this chart of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. What do you think the reciprocal or the, co the cosecant of 30 degrees is? It's just going to be the reciprocal of one half, which is 2. So if that's a 2, so is that. I'm just going to use this side of the chart to give me that side of the chart. If I'm going to take a quiz where I'm going to need this, I'm going to write this on the top of the page. I'm going to write these nine numbers down, and then I'm going to use these to give me these. What do you think the reciprocal of the square root of 2 over 2 is? Well, it'd be 2 over root 2. Oops which you'd multiply by the reciprocal, or multiply by root 2 over 2, which is 2 root 2 over 2. The 2's cancel, giving me what? Root 2. This one's a little ugly. Flip that over and simplify it. It's going to be 2 root 3 over 3, which means this is 2 root 3 over 3. What's the reciprocal of 1? 1. Now, if you remember where we got these, wasn't this 1 over the square root of 3? Isn't that the reciprocal of that? These are already reciprocals of each other. So what do you do over here? Flip them. With that, you can now do sine, cosine, tangent of all of those 30, 45, and 60s, and cosecant, secant, and cotangents. Because now if I have to do what is the secant of 210, well, what's my reference angle? 30, right? What's secant of 30? It's 2 root 3 over 3. What quadrant is that in? Third, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, right? What's cosine? Is, is cosine positive or negative in the third quadrant? So, so is secant. So it's negative 2 root 3 over 3. Does that make sense? Easy? Whoa. Now, what about your quadrantals, though? Let's just do these. I don't even bother writing these down because they're super easy to do in your head. Cosecant, secant, cotangent. What's the reciprocal of 1? One? 1. What's the reciprocal of negative 1? Negative 1. So those are the same numbers, aren't they? What's the reciprocal of zero? It's undefined. So anywhere it's zero, it's undefined. So this would go one, undefined, negative one, undefined. Undefined. What do you think the reciprocal of undefined is? It's zero. Like, those are just super easy. If you know the reciprocal of 1 is 1, and the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, and reciprocal of 0 is undefined, and reciprocal of undefined is 0, yes? What is a graph? Oh, just wait. That's all chapter 2. Chapter 2 is nothing but graphing. I'll show you those. We'll have fun with those. So, now, if, here's how I like to do these. If you have to do cosecant of 180 degrees, 
I'm just going to think, what is the sine of 180 degrees? In your notes, what's the sine of 180 degrees? Oops, there it is. In this chart, so what's the sine of 180 degrees? Zero. Great. If I know the sine of 180 degrees is zero, the answer to this will just be the reciprocal of that, which is undefined. It really is that simple. Does this kind of make sense? You are going to have to know this screen right here, inside and out. You got to know your chart, got to know your quadrants, got to know your quadrantals. If you know those three things, you can find without a calculator, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, of any number on that unit circle that we put up there. Easy? Everybody take a look at page 44, please. I'm going to give you a slightly weird homework assignment. Your homework assignment is this. Page 44. I want you to do 1 through 18 all. Then, when you get to 27, finish it every third. Now, what is 1 through 18? If you look at 1 through 18, what is 1 through 18? Huh? It's the chart, isn't it? Here is 1 through 18. Just draw the chart again. Don't write 1, 2. Please don't do this for 1 through 18. Please don't do 1 is a half. 2 is, please don't do that. Don't even number your chart. What's the only thing I want you to do for 1 through 18? Draw the chart again. Just draw the chart. Then you can use the chart to help you move on. When you get to number... I don't know why I would put 27. It should be 21. This is 21. I don't know why I did that. When you get to 21, all it's asking for is reference angles. It's not asking for what are the trig values. When you get to number 27, what it wants for that 150 is what is the sine of 150? What is the cosine of 150? What is the tangent of 150? And so on and so on. What are the six values? The answers to that question, what's my reference angle for 150? 30. The answers to that question are right here. Right there. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative though. You're in the second quadrant. It'd be positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative. Make sense? I realize there's a couple, um, I realize there's a couple radian in there. I'll show you an easy way to do the radians tomorrow, but we've kind of ran out of time. Have a wonderful day.